Hey friends, it's Kirsten. I want to introduce you to someone who is one of the most important people in my life. Uh, this person is someone who is the mother of all of the work that I do, quite honestly. Uh, her intention and her creation really created a new path for me to figure out how to go forward. And this person is Viola Spolin. Now, Viola is the creator of Improvisation, and this is her most popular book, Improvisation for the Theater. And in this book, uh, it's a lot of games and things she created to figure out how people can be more present and fully available on stage. Now, one of the big things she talks about is intuition. Intuition is a driving force for all people on stage, but how is that not applicable to what we could be doing to be more successful in our daily lives? And by successful, I don't mean earning this much money and driving this kind of car. I mean successful in our relationships, successful in the way that we communicate what it is we need and what it is we feel in any situation so that we can cut through the crap and get to the good stuff. That's what I love. So one thing that I found in her other book that I really love, this is Theater Games for the Lone Actor. And now I get it. You're saying, Kirsten, I'm not, I'm not a performer. I have no intention of being on stage. But this book, honestly, is a lot of walking meditations. It takes the work from her improvisation for the theater book and turns them into bite-sized chunks for people to do on their own. And I don't know that her intention was to make it a meditation book, but that's really how I see it. When you're looking at doing things in no motion or slowing yourself down, really paying attention to what it is you're hearing, paying attention to this moment, that sets you up for being more available in every moment of your life. Now, the gem that I have taken from this book that I use in every single thing that I teach is called The Five Obstacles to a Direct Experience. So for us to be intuitive and really be connected to what it is that our body is telling us we should say next and not what our brain is saying should happen next. To access that kind of intuition, we have to have a direct experience with this moment. So to define a direct experience, I often say to the teenagers that I work with, for example, I'll say, how many of you have ever um, laughed so hard that you peed your pants or almost peed your pants because I know you don't want to admit that in front of everyone here, right? Because you're a teenager. Okay, uh, how many of you have ever been in a really, really crowded place, just tons of stimulation and it's really noisy, but you're having a conversation with just one other person and it's as if none of that is going on because you're so focused on that other person and what they're saying. Great, another direct experience. Cool, so before I get into what the obstacles are, let me tell you, every single person on the planet has these obstacles. I don't care who you are, I mean anyone who eats and sleeps and breathes and burps and farts can really learn something from this list of five obstacles, all right? Even if your name is the Pope, okay. So the first obstacle to a direct experience is called the approval disapproval syndrome. Now this one is what Viola calls a double-sided coin because on one side, you take on behaviors in the approval category. You take on uh, behaviors to try to make yourself liked by the people around you. Uh, and this is often a more of a blown up version of who we are, right? It's not who we are in our essence, but it's who we want people to believe we are. That's happening a lot. Uh, on the opposite side, also happening a lot, which is why she calls it a syndrome. Uh, on the other side is disapproval. So walking into a situation with an automatic, uh, I gotta work with that guy. This is what we're doing today. Great. You can't be present and have a direct experience when you are already distancing yourself from that thing or the people around you. Cool. Really, to boil this one down, it's really just judgment. Judgment is a major syndrome, major syndrome in our society. All right. Okay. The next one, the next obstacle to a direct experience is self-pity. Now, I call this one the hamster wheel of regret because it's always about something that's happened in the past. So think about a time when you have said something dumb or you have, um, you have done something in front of people that you've embarrassed yourself, right? You are beating yourself up over that thing that maybe took 30 seconds to happen, but you've taken an hour, 
two hours, a couple weeks, maybe some months. Oh, hey, heck, we're revisiting something from five years ago constantly, right? Think of how much time in your life you have lost. And I say this to myself, constantly going back to that hamster wheel and beating yourself up over that thing that took this long to happen. All right. The third obstacle to direct experience is also another double-sided coin. It's called success and failure. So on the success side, you might have those people who are very type A, very driven. If they're going to do something, they're going to get it right. It's going to be perfect. Oh, right. Okay. How can they be really present when they're what they're doing with that behavior really is they're manipulating it to be a direct experience they control. And if anyone is trying to control a direct experience, it automatically takes it out of the direct experience category because you can't control what is naturally occurring and happening. All right. On the other side, I will be honest and I will say I tend to live in this side a little bit more. So failure is where uh, I see something, for instance, that looks a little bit difficult or I'm not fully into it and I just, oh, that looks hard. No thanks. Yeah, I tend to be a little more on that side, but it depends on certain situations. I can take over and be a little more on the success side as well. Okay. All right. The fourth obstacle to direct experience is a very simple one to describe, especially to teenagers. It is simply attitudes. So whatever attitude you come in with to a situation that's already occurring, you could possibly be behaving as though you are a middle finger and you're just never gonna join us and, and be involved with us. So relax that, perhaps leave that attitude at the door. It'll be there if you wanna pick it up on your way out, but it will definitely keep a buffer between you and what we're doing right now, all right? And the fifth obstacle, the mother of the other four obstacles is fear. Fear is what causes us to want to create some kind of space or distance between ourselves and a current direct experience, okay? It's what causes us to check our phones constantly. It's what causes us to eat a bag of chips in one sitting. And I'm not talking a tiny one. I mean a big Costco one. <laughs> it is what keeps us from wanting to express emotion. We are afraid we will not be heard or seen or valued, which is really all anyone wants. So when I'm teaching improvisation as a tool for self-awareness, not as a tool for the stage, I'm using Viola's work as a way to show them, here's this roadmap for where you can be more easily available in your life. And perhaps there's an obstacle that you tend to go to or gravitate towards that really has been a lifeline for you and kept you safe. But now how, how can we actively take chances and ask it to say, just, just ask it to maybe sit right next to you. I see you fear. Yeah. Oh, I, oh, I hear you, but I'm not going to let you take me down today. 